If you run a painting company, you oftentimes have your crews request time off. This can be a cumbersome process or hard to manage and difficult to keep track of who's requested time off when, and then also not knowing if someone is off or not to know whether you can schedule a job for them. So in this video, I want to show you how with inside of Airtable, if you're managing your painting projects in Airtable, you can create a very simple process for the crews to submit requests for time off and then your office admin to approve those requests and automatically have them blocked off on your production calendar so they don't get scheduled for any jobs. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Chris. I am the owner of Boolean Automation, where our mission is to free you up to do what you love. We create content like this daily to help painting businesses automate their back office processes to streamline operations, increase the reporting, and just make it easier to scale. So if you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you're a painter, we're glad you're here. We're happy to help. But let's get into this topic on how to automate the time off request and approval process inside of Airtable. So I have the project's timeline. And one of the things that we need to be able to do is when a crew leader takes time off, we want to be able to know or see visually on here that they are not working uh, during given days so that the scheduler doesn't end up booking them. So what I wanna walk through here is how we are going to create a time off process, a requesting process and approval process that then would automatically generate a project for the correct times or days that we want to have someone take time off. And so first we're going to go and look at the underlying data table here. So I'm gonna to go to the view data, which is gonna take us back to the Airtable base. And you'll see here that I have a table here that I created called time off request. And this table, I created a linked record to the employee or the people table. I had a start date, an end date, reason, do they want to use PTO, yes or no? And then a status of whether or not they want to approve that. And so that is the initial field or data set that you need to, a table that you need to create here. And then I want to show you the process of what an employee would do to request time off. So in the interfaces here under production, I have this new time off request. And so this again is if you're wanting to make this you would just go into production and click plus and then add in the form, which I already have done. So the form now exists here so you can see. And then if I'm going to say my name is Peter Trast, I want to take off tomorrow through Friday. And the reason is uh, family in town visiting. And I do want to use PTO. So when I create that over in the table here, I now have that record showing. But what I would do is have my office manager is going to be the one to review this. So I'm going to create a time off approvals uh, dashboard here. And this is going to show all approvals that have yet to be uh, approved. So right here we see Peter Trask, there is another one that was already approved or I can look at all the requests. So in this pending one, I can see that the status is pending. So if I wanna go ahead and say, yep, Peter, you can go ahead and approve this. Now back in the data table here, I have that it says approved. So now the question is, how do you get this line, which is in the time off request to populate as a project that would be time off for Peter in the projects table. And that's where we're going to use the automation field or the automation process. And so I'm going to make a brand new automation here. And this is going to be called, we'll go ahead and minimize this while I work on this. We're going to have the table be based on the time off request, And the conditions are going to be when, we're gonna have a couple of these. So when the employee name is not empty, and I always like doing a few of these to just make sure that we don't miss fire or miss, uh, so it doesn't trigger preemptively. So I, by doing a couple of these, uh, you know, obviously we can't take time off if you don't have a start and end date. So I want to make sure that all of these are not empty. But the trigger cell that we're going to use 
is status is approved. So as soon as the status reaches the approved step, we want to add in some logic here. And actually I'm going to say, we're going to say when the status, yeah, actually we'll keep it like that, is any of, we wanna do approved or denied. So in either scenario, we want to kick off this automation and we're gonna to choose to do a couple different things here. I'm gonna add conditional logic and then this first one for conditions being met is going to be if the status is approved, take this path. And then the other option would be add group below. And it'd say otherwise, if status is denied, do that. So what this is going to do is say, go ahead and fire the automation when all this is true. So as soon as status is approved or denied, we're gonna run the automation. And then here we're going to say in the approved one, we want to create a record. Uh, and this is going to be creating the record inside of the projects table. So we are going to create a record in the projects table and we're going to add in a couple names here. So the job number, we're just gonna always have the job number be you know, zero, 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 that's going to be time off. We're going to also create the start date and the complete date, or actually the duration. And then we want to also have in the employee, or this would be crew leader field. So the crew leader, let's go fill all this stuff out. So the start date is going to be what was submitted in that record. So we want the start date from the actual record. So this is a dynamic variable that's gonna get filled based on what the person submitted on their form. So normally you would have the, you would do the start and end date. In my situation, I have the end date automatically calculated based on the duration or the number of hours of the project. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in three. This is gonna be hard coded in, but in a separate video, we'll talk about how you could I'd do some calculations to calculate the end date from the start date, but this will work for us. So we have the start date, which is going to be what they entered the duration, which is the number of days from start to it being over. And then the crew leader that we want to add, we want to use from the employee name field and we want to have it be the display. We want it to be the ID. So we want to take, the ID of the employee and then pass it back in as the crew leader. And so let's go ahead and click generate a preview, run tests. Uh, we're gonna do Peter Trast. And this is the record that it would have created. Job name, all those are computed fields, that's fine. That would be the approved process. And then the other thing we wanna do is if it's denied, we want to send an email to the person that was associated here. So if we pick the employee, we wanna get the email address of the employee to email. So the way we're gonna do that is that when the employee name is selected, we want to also bring in the employee email in here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that employee name and look that up so that in the automation here, we want to grab the email from employee name and we're going to take the value. So we're going to send it to whoever the email was and the subject is going to say, hey, let's do employee name. Your time off request has been denied. Sorry, but we are not able to approve your time off request. And once again, we'll throw in the person's name. Hey, employee name. Sorry, but we are not able to approve your time off request for, and we can include the information of their time off request. So I'm actually gonna say your time off request and it's gonna say reason from blank to blank. Please reach out 
if you have any questions. Okay, so that's gonna be the email that gets sent if it's denied. And we can go ahead and generate a preview. The to field is empty. There we go, so now it's working. We can go ahead and do that. So if it gets approved, it's going to create that project. So let's go ahead and look at this. I have Chris Kiefer. And the other thing I like to do here is add in another column that says, says automation status. And inside the automation here, and when we create the record, I wanna add one more thing here that says update record. And we are going to update in the time off table the record ID that was just submitted. So the record ID that caused this whole thing to start. And we are going to update the automation status by saying time off project successfully created. And then in this one, we'll duplicate this and move it to here. And in this case, we'll say email sent to employee about time off denied. So in either way, we're gonna get some feedback in the table. Let's go ahead and click update. And let's actually go ahead while we're here, duplicate this action and move this one to here. And in this one, we're gonna say your time off request has been approved. And we have approved your time off request. And there's that one. So we go ahead and update that as well. So now if I go back to here, I'm gonna switch these both back to pending. I'm gonna switch this to test automation. And so from the interface here, the office manager is going to be looking at time off approval, approvals and he's going to deny Peter and approve Chris. And if I go look at what happens in the background here, we're going to see that the time off project is created. So if I go look at Chris, I should see that there is a project now in the timeline for Chris from 4.2 to 4.5. So let's go look at that interface and the oh, whoops, and operations manager timeline. And we have Chris. And here is the time off project that was created for Chris. There we go. And it's he's blocked off there. And that is how you can manage time off inside of Airtable. Thanks so much for watching. If this was valuable, please like the video. If you're a painter, as I mentioned before, subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to chat about how we might be able to help optimize or streamline your business, please reach out. We've got a bunch of links down below. We'd be happy to chat. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.